The cross is controversial. Either you accept it or you reject it. There's no middle ground. God sent his son Jesus Christ out of heaven to this earth on a rescue mission, and that is to save us from our sins. For those that are being saved, it's the power of God, but for those that are not being saved, it's foolishness of the gospel. That's right, the foolishness of the gospel. The gospel is a dividing line, and my question to you is, do you believe it? So you just stay tuned. There's a power and a boldness in Jesus Christ. With Jesus Christ in your heart tonight, He will give you the strength. He'll give you the power. Let Him set you free. He died for us. And in that cross, there is a mysterious and strange power to change your life. The gospel is the good news that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's the power of the cross. That's the power of the gospel. This wonderful message, the gospel message, is the good news. Hello, I'm Franklin Graham, and I want to take just a, a moment to speak to you about the gospel. Everything that we do at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is geared around taking this message, this gospel message, to the ends of the earth. But it produces uh, different results. Uh, the gospel divides. Uh, it separates. Um, it, it can even produce uh, riots and revolution. And I want to share with you just a, a verse out of, a few verses out of 1 Corinthians. And it's chapter 1 and verse 18. And Paul is writing, and he's saying, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The gospel is the power of God. And it's foolishness to those that aren't being saved. But to those that God is calling, it's the power of God. And I thought about the foolishness the foolishness of, of, of preaching, the foolishness of the gospel. What does that mean? See, for me, when I, when I hear the gospel, when someone preaches the gospel, um, I rejoice. Uh, I'm excited when I hear what God has done for me, that Christ died for me, that he saved me from my sin. I get, I get excited about that. But to those that are perishing, it, it's, it's foolishness. They're saying to themselves, wait a second, you mean that Jesus Christ this guy that lived 2,000 years ago, you're trying to tell me this guy was God? And that he took my sins and he allowed himself to be executed on a Roman cross? And he, he died and he shed his blood? And then when you tell him, but he rose from the grave. And you can invite him to come into your heart and he'll come and he'll live his life through your life right now. They just kind of shake their head and they don't get it. They don't understand it. And it sounds like babble to them. It's foolishness. I've preached many times. And, uh, of course, being up on the, on the platform behind the pulpit, uh, preaching the gospel, I can, I can look at the audience and I can see the faces of people. And there will be somebody who will be with their arms folded. And you tell the person that they're a sinner. Well, that offends them. When you tell them that none are righteous, none are good, and, and that all of their works is nothing but uh, filthy rags uh, to our Lord, uh, their, their arms are sitting there and their arms are crossed and they're kind of glaring at you, or they've got their hands on their hand, they're looking off into to outer space, uh, thinking of something else. They're not engaged in what you're saying. Because the gospel is foolishness to those who are not being saved. But at the same time, I, I will be preaching the gospel, and there will be someone with their arms like this, and then it's like this, and then tears will be coming down their face. It's the same message, but one's heart is hardened and the other is being broken. This is the power of the gospel, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, out of heaven to this earth 
on a rescue mission, and that is to save us from our sins. Uh, we are sinners. The Bible says we've all sinned. We've all come short of God's glory. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And my question to you is, do you believe it? God so loved Franklin Graham that he gave his only begotten son for Franklin Graham, that if Franklin Graham would believe, he wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. For me, when I hear that, my, my heart rejoices. It, it leaps within me because I know that God has forgiven me, not because of anything I've done. I was 22 years old when I got on my knees one night and I said, God, I've sinned against you and I'm sorry, and I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for me, that he rose from the grave, and I want him to come into my heart, and I want him to live and take control of my life. And that night, my life changed. That night, God forgave Franklin Graham. And he'll forgive any of you that are watching. All you have to do is call on his name, to believe on his name. Trust him as your savior. Believe that he died for you, that he rose from the grave. Invite him to come into your heart. Trust him. Believe me, you'll never regret it. Everything we do at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is about taking this gospel to the ends of the earth. And I just want to take the next few moments and just share with you some of the areas, places like Haiti, where the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is at work, where lives are being changed. India, where we just had an opportunity to preach. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association isn't about Billy Graham. It's not about Franklin Graham. It's about this gospel this gospel message. I want to take the next few moments and just share with you the power of God. In India, there's 1.2 billion of people are living, but it's less than 3% of the people are Christians. The Indian people are very God-fearing people and that is why they go into all sorts of things that they want to worship. This is the greatest harvest field in the whole world. See, everyone has got felt need. In the Hinduism and things like that, there is no hope for them. Many religions have works. Jesus did the work on the cross. When they come to Christ, they see the great difference in it. In the gospel gives them hope. God loves you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. This festival, the festival of hope, has created such an enthusiasm among the pastors, believers. It touches the whole city. Such a unity has come about. And there's a great excitement in the air as well as expectation. No, there's a big festival organized and we've got this one good rally in early in the morning for girls going out, telling people that we love Jesus. Through this, you know, I can get more people this evening for Chennai Hope Festival. Jesus Christ came to this earth on a rescue mission. He came to take your sins. Bluntly put, India needs Jesus Christ, and that's my uh, hope for India. Uh, because people are going through a lot of problems and the only person that can help them really is Jesus Christ and not the religions that we hold on to. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. What will you do tonight? They have such a hunger. I was praying that Christ would come into their hearts. He is knocking at the door and he's waiting. If you're here tonight and you have never confessed your sins to God, if you have never asked for his forgiveness, Tonight, come home to your Heavenly Father. It was just marvelous. The Holy Spirit conviction was very powerful. I just saw people cry and they just gave their heart to Jesus. I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I want to trust Him as my Lord and follow Him from this day forward. See, it's not about being good or bad. The issue is our personal trust in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He alone is the Savior of the world. This was really the first time an event like this has happened where so many people came together to work under one banner for the sake of Chennai and the Gospel. 
I definitely see a change in the entire Christian community altogether because youngsters will be challenging the elders to step up and that's huge. We've had the opportunity of preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have seen thousands of people put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you know, we're, we can only come to countries like this because of your support and because of your prayers. We thank God for your help, for your partnership, for your support. Please keep us in your prayers. God bless you. This is just the beginning of something huge that's going to come in Chennai. There's not a crowd, there's not anything. It's just the, the sparkle in these eyes, you know, which just say that, no? I'm free. <laughs>